Ah, I'm so conflicted, but not really. <laughs> Hey y'all, it's Britt Latrice and welcome back to my channel. I'm so excited to be here today. So today I have a video that is very different than any other that I've ever filmed before. And we are going to talk about an item that I am deciding to no longer keep as a part of my personal handbag collection. It is such a bittersweet moment y'all, but we will get into it in just one moment after I show y'all this outfit. So today I am wearing Zara, a matching set from this like spring summer collection. It's giving me very clueless vibes. It's giving me like 90s. It's giving me Cher, Dion, all that good stuff. So I love it and I love the yellow. I've been trying so hard to wear color. I know I mentioned that last time, but I've been loving it. It's just so fun and it makes you feel good. So yeah. All right, so y'all, we gotta talk. We really gotta talk about this because ah, I'm freaking out about it, but I am deciding to sell an item that I actually no, didn't even unbox on here because I have been so conflicted about it since maybe a month or so after I acquired it. And it is a Chanel boy bag. So we're going to just call this video boy bye because it's going bye bye. We're, we're getting rid of it. I have made up my mind and I'm like really trying to keep it like this way because I keep going back and forth. But even when I go back and forth, I am still very confident in my decision to sell my boy bag. So we're going to talk about it and we're going to talk about what went wrong for me when it came to this specific item. I think it's a gorgeous piece. So like, that's not it. It's not that I'm not a fan, but again, we will get right into it right now. So let me get it out for y'all because you're probably like, what boy bag? I haven't seen a boy bag. I didn't even know you liked Chanel like that. Yeah. So... Honestly, I feel like I'm gonna eat my words because I told myself in my like wish list video that I wanted a Chanel boy bag and that I felt like I was team boy bag versus team classic flap. However, I feel like now I may be team classic flap more than boy bag. But I still have mixed feelings about Chanel because they're doing the most lately. And I'm like, y'all, the offering hasn't changed. But these prices, good Lord. <laughs> really? And then they got hit with this European deal. Oh, oh, oh okay, okay, okay. We're gonna get into it. Let's go, let, let me grab it, let me grab it. All right, so I was, I was goofing off, but here it is. Um. hit myself with the box I feel like all right I just want to say y'all know I am getting rid of this thing if I didn't even do my little cutesy unboxing for y'all like you know how I be doing mm -mm. nope not for this we're gonna save the energy so oh, it looks so good on camera see see okay okay back to the regularly scheduled programming here focus 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 okay so here she is She's so beautiful, y'all. So I got this like last spring as a part of Chanel's 21K collection. It is the coveted caramel color that continues to bring itself forth like season after season. Now Chanel doesn't repeat colors, but they have repeated this color. It really all started with the 19 that was caramel that like people lost their stuff over. After that, they decided to make this boy bag and that came from the 21P collection. So 21K, they also brought back the same Chanel 19 in this caramel color. They brought this boy bag in this color and I think they had minis in this color, mini classic flaps. And if they didn't have them during that collection, they had them the collection after and had like just classic flaps in the caramel color. So just kind of giving you guys some history about this color and why like for the Chanel community, it's like mattered so much and why I, as a person who is a fan and wanted this bag for almost a decade and finally got it. 
that's why I chose this color and that's why it meant like so much and still does to me like I think the color the hardware this is me I am such a gold hardware person I am such a caramel person so this all made sense to me but after I got over the optics of having a dreamy caramel colored Chanel bag I just realized I really didn't use this it wasn't me. Okay, okay. So I wore it once. And also, mind you, it still has its, like, plastic on it. Because <laughs> I was, like, always so unsure. I just never felt like it was, like, my bag. Even though I purchased it, I got it, I own it, it's mine. <sighs> I sound so ridiculous. I hope, I hope this makes sense when you guys watch it and I'm able to describe this as it makes sense to me in my mind right now, but just bear with me. All right, so the number one reason why I would like to get rid of this item is because I just feel like it is very bulky. It's a gorgeous bag, but like on my body, the way that I feel like it jolts out, I feel like it's a bag that I only feel the most comfortable with it if I have like a coat on, if I'm very layered up and I know I'm taking up a little bit more space because I like kind of like um longer, heavier coats. But like in life, I don't, you know, I don't want to take up <laughs> more space than I'm used to. <sighs> okay, okay, okay. Let's redo this. Basically... I just felt like, because I felt like this item on my body jolted out and it made me very protective over this. And I'm not one that wants to be super precious about my bags, but like I wore it to Target and I remember like walking down the aisles, like, like I'm going to put this down, but walking down the aisles, like, like trying to like dodge the corners because I felt like I was going to have maybe like a lapse of judgment just a tad bit a lapse of spatial judgment and I felt like I was going to run into something and like hit it and damage the item y'all I have never <laughs> I know this seems that sounds a little bit ridiculous but I have never felt that uncomfortable like wearing something I I felt like I just felt like my spatial like recognition and, and consciousness in terms of what I'm used to, but how I felt like I had to function was just like completely off. It just, it just kind of wasn't, it wasn't working. So that's it crossbody. So as far as a shoulder bag, it's so far under your like arm. And granted, that's not a bad thing, but because of the way this bag is structured, yes, I have like a, um, a smorga bag organizer for this but you don't want to like smash it because then it gets that like pancakey there's a word for it that I'm not thinking of right now but it has that like kind of like way where it just starts to lose its structure and this bag the beauty of it is truly in its structure like it's such a structure bag so like let's talk about entry I realize I do like more top entry bags where you could just literally like unzip, stick your hand down into it and be good. Granted though, I don't mind the flat, but I felt like with this, I didn't want it to crease. And I've read and done a lot of research and you only should lift to like here if you absolutely don't want it to crease. Otherwise, if you pull it up, it could really crease a lot in the back. And I'm like, why am I thinking of this bag's wear so quickly? into like getting it but I think because of the fact that I felt like I could just easily bump it or I could easily squeeze it and that the, there was a possibility of it not looking the way that I, I loved to see it look not too far after like my time with it really scared me I, I realized I want an item that I feel like wears a little bit better after use and I just didn't think like this could be it for me so I know that the corners have the ability to look 
probably the worst because they are super exposed and super sharp in comparison to most bags. So I was a little bit just nervous. Again, this kind of goes into me being so nervous about it looking like less than I would imagine or want it to look so shortly after my time with it. The chain. Ooh, y'all baby. Let's talk about this chain. Let's talk about this chain. All right. So this is not new information, but you know, sometimes you're like, oh, that won't bother me. And mm, mm, it bothers me. It's like a catch 22 because it's like your favorite part of the bag in most cases, but it's also one of the pain points of the bag too. So this chain, because you know, people do like to wear it this way this slips off like all my clothes there's no item that I had that it just wasn't like completely slipping off on it's a very slippery chain and because this is the other way to wear it from a shoulder standpoint and I, I would prefer it on a shoulder clearly since the crossbody part wasn't working for me this is not the type of bag that just needs to just like slip off my arm and hit the floor talking about having a meltdown yeah oh yeah I don't even want to think about it because like I just know how bad my meltdown was about to be if this bag hit the floor I know that okay so these two little buttons on the bag the first time I went into Chanel to try out a boy bag my hair got caught in these buttons and it was terrifying. It really hurt. Like, I know everybody's like, it hurts. No, but for real, it really hurt. Like, it it, it had a death grip on my hair. And I was like, oh, oh man. Oh, oh. Now, at that point, I was like, I may not want this because that was kind of scary. And I want to wear my hair down and in all kinds of styles with it. I know there's that, like, clear rubber band trick. But with all the thoughts that I started to formulate about this bag plus knowing that that started to bother me more and I'm like no I don't want no bag that could potentially rip out my hair or just give me grief as it pertains to my hair because that could be dangerous especially if like in that case I was trying it on in the boutique and had somebody there to help me but like in places where somebody can't help you and then maybe somebody you don't know has to help you and, and get a little bit into close proximity with you and help you with your Chanel bag like that <laughs> I don't know about y'all but that just sounds like a recipe for disaster like on so many levels so I was like mm, yeah another thing that I learned because of the type of gold I was always a little bit nervous about this larger piece scratching super easily um again it still has its plastic on it so nothing to worry about here but I I just was like if it scratches it, I'm gonna be so upset like I guess all signs pointed to all potential damages would just make me so upset and I I just didn't want to be upset y'all. I didn't want to be upset. But one good thing in terms of that though that I'm not pointing out is that this bag is caviar so it's very durable like it, it you know it has these beautiful pebbles and it's beautiful color. I, it, it's durable in that sense. That's what I was gonna say and I totally kept forgetting. What I went wrong with this bag is I bought it to be an everyday bag and um because from research and what I've read, I was told that people like this as an everyday bag because it feels more casual for Chanel. And I just did not necessarily, for me and my lifestyle, agree with that. I, I don't think this is an everyday bag at all. Um, what everyday for me and to me looks like may be a little bit different than others, I'm realizing. And so that's where I think just the expectation of what I was going to do with this versus the reality of what I felt like and how I behaved when I had it was very different. And I think that was something important for me to identify and know and like honor, like, you know, within myself, like, girl, this ain't no everyday bag for you. I mean, it could be for somebody else in a different type of lifestyle, but for you, yeah, like, nah, she ain't everyday. I think the other thing is that 
what I needed to admit to myself is that this bag came out a while ago. And I was a fan when it first came out. And I've wanted it since then. And I basically got it almost, not a full, but almost 10 years later. And I think because it had always been one of those like really big aspirational items, I didn't really consider how much my style had changed, how much you change. And this item that was like important to me 10 years ago really didn't feel that important to me now. And that I think shows a level of personal growth because you know that that happens and that's a really real thing. Sometimes we need more than the 15 or 30 day return policy to realize, hey, that's not really gonna work out for my lifestyle or my needs at this time. And it's okay to decide to do something different. Very few things in life are permanent and we always have the ability to change like outcomes and our decision. It's one of those moments where it was like, give yourself permission to change your mind and be okay with that. You don't have to be locked into the 2012 version of yourself that saw this and fell in love with it because it was the it bag, you know, when it came out. I can evolve and I can want and like different things and I can have a change of heart and I can realize some new things about myself. And I realize that I am starting to gravitate towards more classic pieces. Granted, there's no part of me that doesn't think this is not a classic because it is. It's a part of the classics collection. It's not the classic flat, but it is a part of, you know, the collection that will continue to come out season over season over season. At the same time, I just realized for me, what a classic looks like for me is something that I'll continue to wear, something that I'm obsessed with, something that just like really goes with all the pieces of my wardrobe, something that doesn't give me a hard time, but like continues to like show up and show out in my life, even just as an item, day after day, season after season, year over year. And I just felt like this did fall short in a lot of different areas. And it was a little bit disappointing. So that realization took so much processing and acceptance and learning and honesty and self-reflection. So what I will say though, after all of that, cause it was a little bit of a jumble, but I, I can say this, it is a beautiful piece. And I think this is gonna be something that I always admire on people wearing, but I don't necessarily need to own. And um, there's a lot of items like that. There's items that you like, ooh, girl, yes, 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 yes. And then you're like, but you don't necessarily have to own it to enjoy it or admire it. And that's, that's how I feel about the boy bag is that as much as I admire it, as much as it's always been on like my um, Tumblr boards back in the day and my Pinterest mood boards that I create, I think it could just stay there and like still be a vibe. But for me... I think a different item would just be more fitting at this time in my life. That is where we are with this item. I love you. It's been real, even though I didn't even wear you like but once with the plastic on because I had no shame, okay? Um, but yeah, I think that's kind of just like where I stand with it. So, ah! I'm so conflicted, but not really. <laughs> All right. So that is everything that I have for you guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. I hope it prompts some honest discussion. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and hit that bell for notifications each time that I upload. I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.